Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today I'm going to talk about the science and how the word or the phrase the science really illustrates a misconception about how science works, how the truth discovery process works in general. And let me make it a little bit more personal. And I've talked to you before about being aloof, which is sort of a personal style that I've always taken to heart about how I can maintain sufficient independence so that as a theorist I can work on new kinds of problems and continue to make discoveries in new fields where I initially know nothing. That kind of aloofness is really what allows me to do that. Being socially aloof it gives me that kind of independence. Now sometimes folks have said to me, Mark, but isn't that immature? Shouldn't you as a serious scientist stay in one field? Focus on continuing the incremental uh, evidence accumulation for the ideas that you've had. Uh, it, it, it shows the level of seriousness that you would stay in those fields. Now first, if I had done that, I'd still be in whatever first field where I made some significant mark. And I wouldn't have had any of the other discoveries after that because I'd be just in that same thing trying to make sure that that idea stays and becomes part of the historical literature within science. And that's al already a big problem because I wouldn't have done anything else. But the bigger problem with that kind of attitude is you don't want to be in a situation where you feel compelled to ensure that your idea sticks through the, through the tincture of time. That puts you in the awkward position of just trying to make sure that it's true. In essence, in essence every time someone publishes a criticism, you're out there arguing against it and providing more. You're going to spend your entire life, and in some sense, as a, a little nasty censor that keeps attacking everybody that's saying anything. Of it. And that's not the way science works. That's not the way that you want to work. You want to allow the community of scientists to just work with the idea that you have, they'll figure it out. And that's what always been my attitude that allows me to just move on to new kinds of things. And you have to have that kind of laissez-faire attitude, not just about one's own scientific ideas, but about all ideas in general. And this is the notion, this is the, the sense in which the science gets everything wrong. You have this idea of what you think is right, and you think it's the science handed down upon, you know, from God, from the scientific community, but it's not that way. It's that kind of attitude that leads people and journalists disproportionately and even academics disproportionately to say that misinformation should be censored on social media by big tech, which is completely misunderstanding the processes at work when we come to find truth. It's by virtue of two sides debating, constantly debating one side, which is always effectively misinformation or confused or wrong. That's how the discovery of, of, of the truth occurs. So. All of us need to have a laissez-faire attitude about one's opponents. Of course you think your opponents are saying wrong things, but it's allowing them to say those wrong things those wrong things, and not asking Twitter to ban it or asking the government to force Twitter or Facebook to ban it. That's what allows us to move together as a whole towards a better society, towards freedom. Free expression undergirds all of that. And that was your science moment.